following in the footsteps of Superman, another superhero is about to make a big screen comeback. Remember Pal Zap? Yes, folks, the Caped Crusader is back. Batman will finally make it to the movies. The Batman will be roaring back to movie screens this summer, this time dressed in black leather and dead serious about crushing crime in Gotham City. Vicki Vale. Hi. Bruce Wayne. And what do you do for a living? Before you say, hey, Warner Brothers is turning Batman into a combination of RoboCop and Dirty Harry, take a look at these comic strip panels. In his 50-year career in law enforcement, the Batman has always been the hero happy to use terror, brutality, and even heavy artillery to rid the streets of criminal garbage. Alfred, let's go shopping. Well, when I created Batman in 1939, he was a vigilante, basically, and he looked like a vampire. Cartoonist Bob Kane, who's been guiding the adventures of Batman for five decades, is thrilled that the lean, mean, movie Batman will resemble his comic strip more than the campy television series of the 1960s. Gone are the corny jokes. Gone is the wholesome teenage sidekick Robin. In is a sexy romance with photographer okay, Vicki Vale, played by Kim Basinger. And listen up, Batman fans. Bob is even happy with the choice of weak chin Michael Keaton to portray this tough as nails Batman. Do not expect uh, Mr. Mom, and do not expect uh, Mr. Beetlejuice, and do not expect Adam West. It's going to be a, an awesome new Michael Keaton with new respect. And of course, the costume flexes all the real muscles. <laughs> Keaton worked out for two months to play Batman, but the newly designed rubber bat suit provides all the physique needed. Director Tim Burton has said he always wanted a small man to play the part, picking 5-foot, 10-inch Keaton over almost picked 5-foot, 9-inch Mel Gibson. He said, I wanted to do a realistic movie, and therefore I thought if I got somebody more ordinary who would become a Batman, it would make more sense, uh, because otherwise, why would a guy 6-foot, 4 that's a Hulk like Schwarzenegger need a costume. He can just put on a ski mask if he wants to be incognito and go out and wallop people uh, with one shot and that would be it, right? Another secret to this manly suit, there's a chin brace in the helmet that holds Keaton's weak chin out, hero style. For the movie's villain, the Batman producers turn to the Joker. Once portrayed as a merry prankster, now portrayed as a dyed-in-the-wool murderous psychopath. Now, who do you suppose they called on to chalk up for the part? Jack is dead, my friend. You can call me Joker. Are you ready for Jack Nicholson? Wing freak terrorizes. Wait till they get a load of me. I had a meeting with him up at his home in the, up in the canyon, and he, uh, he said, well, what do you think? How do you think the, the Joker should be handled? So I said, Jack, you know, it should not be the campy TV show Joker that Cesar Romero portrayed. It was okay for that era. He clowned it up, and he was a buffoon. Your Joker is a maniacal killer. He's a psychopath, a murderer, and something evil like you did in The Shining. Only you could do that so well, because you're really the Joker, Jack, without makeup. Let's face it. <laughs> $30 million have been invested to bring Batman to the big screen with big stars and a top creative team. It's been in pre-production for nine years, while different teams of writers have wrestled with the movie's biggest challenge, making a serious adventure movie out of a property best known as a comedy television series. Some people still find the idea of a grown man dressed like a bat funny. Lieutenant, is there a six-foot bat in Gotham City? But if I were you, I'd keep my opinions to myself because you never know. Don't kill me! Don't kill me! Don't kill me! What are you? You just might get an unwelcome visit from the Batman.